it was a Republic Day morning in Gujarat. Children were getting ready for parades, flags were being raised and the air was filled with cheer. But at 8.46 a.m. the earth decided to march too with a deadly force. The ground shook so violently that buildings collapsed within seconds. It was one of the strongest earthquakes India had ever felt, a magnitude of 7.7 on the Richter scale. The Bhuj earthquake didn't just shake Gujarat, it shook the entire country's understanding of how powerful Earth's hidden forces can be. But what exactly makes the solid ground suddenly move? Let's dig into what really happens under our feet during an earthquake. Like a cake, the earth is made up of multiple layers. And just how we can see the layers of a cake only when we cut it, the layers of earth too are visible only when we cut it open. So let's do it. And here's what we see. The earth is made up of four basic layers. The crust, which is the outermost layer, it is also supposedly the thinnest of all. And by the way, this thin is in comparison to the other layers because it's still around 30 kilometers thick. To give you some perspective, the deepest of deep mines, they are around 6 kilometers. So you can imagine. On the other hand, the Earth's radius is about 6,400 kilometers. So compared to that, the crust is really, really thin. Okay, let's not get caught up on how thin the crust is. Instead, let's focus on its structure. If we look at it sideways, it would be easier to visualize better. This top layer or the crust is made up of huge slabs of rocks. And we call these slabs of rocks as tectonic plates. Now, just below the crust, we have the mantle. And the mantle is about 2,900 kilometers thick. And like the crust, it too is made up of rocks. But the temperatures in the mantle layer is really hot, roughly 1000 degrees Celsius near the top to about 3700 degrees Celsius near the bottom. And at such high temperatures, the rock is partly molten. We call this molten rock as magma. Beneath the mantle, we have the outer core. And it is about 2200 kilometers thick and is mostly made up of iron and nickel. The temperature here is around 4,500 to 5,500 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt both the metals. So this layer too is molten. Digging deeper into the outer core, we finally reach the solid inner core, which is also made up of iron and nickel. And here the temperature can reach up to 6,000 degrees Celsius. But how is it solid then? Think about it and let us know in the comments below. Anyways. Our layers of focus for this video in order to understand why and how earthquakes occur are the crust and the mantle. Now there is a process going on inside the mantle whereby warm things rise and cold things sink. You see the mantle, it gets heated by the core. The core is around 6000 degrees Celsius while the mantle is cooler. So heat moves from a hotter area to a less hot one. Now, some parts of the mantle gets more heated up than the others. And in the hotter parts, the warm magma begins to rise upwards, okay? It then spreads outwards, eventually getting cool enough to sink back down, somewhat like this, okay? To sink back down. It flows back towards the area it originally rose up from, and warms up as it does so, eventually getting warm enough to rise up again. And this whole process repeats itself. We call this circular cycle a convection current. And by the way, these convection cycles take millions of years to complete inside our planet. These convection currents in the mantle keeps the tectonic plates of the crust slowly moving over thousands of years, somewhat like this. However, at times these plates, they can get stuck together and can't move. But the convection energy still continues to build up, right? And eventually this energy is released all at once in a sudden jolt. 
And while this energy helps the tectonic plates finally move past each other, it also shakes the ground causing an earthquake. And in case you are wondering how much energy is released, let me help you. An earthquake of magnitude 7.7 .7, like the one in Gujarat releases roughly the same amount of energy as tens of thousands of Hiroshima bombs going off all at once. By the way, the magnitude of an earthquake is measured on a scale which we call as the Richter scale. And the Richter scale tells us how much energy was released by the quake. Each increase of 1 on this scale means that the quake is about 10 times stronger in shaking and releases about 30 times more energy. I think the bigger question to be addressed here is how is this energy released? And to understand that, think about this. When we throw a pebble or a stone into a pond, we see ripples spreading across like this, right? And this is exactly how energy causing an earthquake spreads in waves. I know it's difficult to imagine a similar ripple effect happening in the ground, but it does. And the center of that ripple, the very place you threw the stone at, becomes the center of the earthquake, which we call as the hypocenter or the focus. The so-called ripples are called the seismic waves. And the hypocenter is where the seismic waves originate. Usually the areas most prone to be the hypocenter of earthquakes are along or near the lines where tectonic plates meet. I mean that's obvious, right? And these lines are called the fault lines or the seismic zones. As you can see, from the hypocenter, the waves radiate outward in all directions. The spot on the surface where seismic waves first reach, it's called the epicenter. It is where the impact of the earthquake is most strongly felt. In the form of buildings crashing, bridges breaking or humans falling off vehicles and so on and so forth. And the worst part is that while the intensity of earthquakes can be measured, there is still no way to predict exactly when or where one will occur, which makes it one of the most dreaded natural disasters of all times. So that's it about earthquakes. Now let's do a quick recap. The earth is made up of four layers, the crust, the mantle, the outer core and the inner core. And now inside the hot mantle, there are convection currents that are going on continuously that make the earth's tectonic plates move. When these plates get stuck, pressure builds up until it suddenly releases and that's an earthquake. The energy travels from the hypocenter as seismic waves spreading slowly from the hypocenter underground to the epicenter on the surface. Right? And the epicenter is the point where the maximum impact of the earthquake is felt. And while we can measure earthquakes, we still can't predict them. Which is why the only way forward is to prepare better for their impact.